All right, so you want me to keep nose down during my throw. Okay, sounds weird, but here we go. But, oh, you meant the disc. Got it. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Um, just so excited about this series and how it's been going and the interest that it's been getting from you all. This is what I envisioned when I started this channel. I don't need to be the biggest, I don't need to be the best, I don't need, I'm not worried about numbers, I'm worried about interaction, I'm worried about quality, I'm worried about helping individuals. So I'm just so blessed and so thankful to God for the people that he's put in my path to allow me to do this, Paul and Dave over at uh, Power Disc Golf Academy, and now most recently Josh from Overthrow. I uh, can't recommend both of those enough. Josh is just a prince among men. The more I get to know him, uh, the more I appreciate him and what he's trying to do for the sport um, and, and putting out exceptional content and really developing people who are interested in the sport to elevate the game. Uh, I know disc golf's been around for a long time, but it's really still in its infancy when it comes to um, broad audience. But uh, Josh is dedicated to growing the sport and his enthusiasm is infectious. And I've gotten it. Uh, and ever since um, I've uh, been, been coached by him these past couple months, uh, I, I just get more and more excited every time I talk. So if you're in need of a coach, um, I, can't, I can't recommend Josh enough. Um, so, uh, head on over to his channel, head on over his Patreon and, and support him. Uh, and I'm thankful to him for his, for his partnership and, and, and mentoring me as well, not just as a student, but as a future coach, hopefully, and as a fellow YouTuber. So, uh, let's get on to the content today. It's going to be about nose angle, uh, probably one of the most popular, uh, topics in disc golf outside of how can I throw farther. Uh, is how do I throw nose down? Um, and why do I want to throw nose down? So why do you want to throw nose down? It's science. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know. It has to do with uh, physics and lift and drag and airflow and all that stuff. But trust me when I tell you, when you're throwing a disc, you want to throw it nose down. So how do you throw it nose down? Uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, back in my earlier uh, videos when I'm when I was videoing my uh, rounds out at a disc golf course, uh, you might have heard a lot of comments somewhere along the lines of this. Oh, that's high. All right, that was really, really high. That was really, really high. And I can safely say since those days, and really more pointedly over the past two or three months, um, my consistency in throwing nose down has elevated dramatically. So uh, over the past week, I, I sat down and started thinking, what have I done that has helped me now get the nose down and not throw those sky high drives or approach shots? I just want to get this out there and give you my spin on uh, what it takes to throw nose down. So the most important aspect of being able to throw nose down is your grip. You want to be able to have, when you put your hand out in your grip, you want your nose angle, this right here, to be down, right? Uh, so you need a grip that allows you to do that. The grip that I use has changed um, from when I started to when I then joined the Power Disc Golf Academy to now. So when I joined the Power Disc Golf Academy, my grip changed. I was always put the disc right along this part of your hand, right? And as you can see, that is not going to allow you to throw nose down, right? That was my beginner grip. Grip number two came when I joined the Power Disc Golf Academy and Paul tells you to line the disc up with your arm, you know, straight up your arm like this, if I can get you to see, right? Straight up your arm and then curl your third and fourth finger under and pull back toward the back of your hand and then place the 
first and second finger next to them and pull in, right? So now you can see I am much more nose down when I'm throwing my disc. This was a great, uh, this was a great grip and I used it and it helped me get nose down more, but I really still wasn't very consistent. But then I saw a video where Josh talked about his grip and uh, how he sets up his grip for the disc. And I think this grip is based on the Bonapain grip and he'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but um, he set up his disc in the base of his hand, the middle and the base of his hand. So if you do this and there's a little crease right there in, in the base of your hand, set your disc there and then set the other end between your first and your middle finger and then just close your hand and then wrap your first, your index finger underneath. Okay. And as you can see now, even more so than my power disc golf Academy grip, this one is nose down. And then when you pour the coffee, it's even more nose down. So, it's nose down even just in a natural state, but then if you take measures to become even more nose down and pour the coffee a little bit, then you're accentuating that nose down. And I don't know if this is normal or if everyone else does, but do you see my thumb? When I wrap the disc and then put my index finger, I place my thumb, I pinch the disc. So if I were to let my other three fingers go, I'm pinching the disc. And Paul talks about this in the Power Disc Golf Academy. This is really what you want. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, which is why the name of the video is what it is. I know a little clickbaity, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, this is my grip. And because I, I think because I don't hold my thumb flat, but I pinch it, there's a little more down pressure that gives me even more ability to get that nose angled down. So my grip, I think, is a major, uh, a major uh, determining factor for me as to why I'm throwing nose down more consistently. As I was thinking about it, there's three other reasons, and they're minor, but I think they do really contribute to me throwing nose down. And one is uh, the way I deliver the disc at the hit, right? Uh, so you've seen in past videos that I curl my wrist uh, and it's usually at four o'clock. And when I come through the disc and get to the hit, I do not extend my wrist. I keep it curled and let the disc force itself out of my hand. I think that helps me because if I were to come and get to the hit and try to flip my wrist out, the way my wrist, the way my wrist moves, I tend to uh, pronate when I backhand, right? So my backhand is, and, I, and I've always done this in tennis, when I backhand, my, my wrist naturally pronates, okay? So what does that mean for my release? That when I get here, and if I were to flex my wrist, right, pronating is, is this way, so my thumb would press down, right? And what would happen? The nose would go up. Right? So because I keep it here, don't flip my wrist, my nose angle stays the same. The third reason is um, related to what I just said, because I know that I have a tendency when I extend to pronate, I consciously, uh, well, maybe not consciously, but uh, well, maybe it is conscious. Uh, when I get to the end, I try to supinate my hand a little bit, uh, knowing that when I get here, my hand wants to dip and pronate under a little bit. Um, what I want to do is when I get to the hit, have my thumb up and away as I'm, as I'm throwing, right? And I've heard this in videos before. To me, it just keeps the nose down even more when I get to the end and try to, to supinate some, right? It, I mean, maybe that's why I, I have problems throwing a hyzer, but I think it also helps me in a way, keep keep the nose down. I just make sure that when I release, my thumb is sort of pushing forward, right? Instead of pushing down. So that's reason number three. And the last reason I think is the change in my X step posture. You saw in my last video that Josh uh, has me on my toes and bending over a little more uh, in this past lesson that I had with him 
just yesterday. Uh, we went over a little bit more of that. Uh, keeping bent at the waist and keeping over the disc, and, and that tends to keep me upright when I throw, or even a little bit forward, like my body angle. Uh, so body angle, I think, is the last uh, is the last reason that I'm much more consistent. Because before, when I was coming through, I'm standing up, and when I'm going to pull through, I had a tendency more to lean backward, right? So the more straight up and down you are uh, when you get to the hit, the more you are prone to leaning backwards. You're always going to elevate a little bit when you go to throw the disc. It's just the way you compensate like cantilevering, right? Your arm's extending, so more weight is going on out here, so you want to balance it by leaning back a little bit. So now when I'm bent over and I'm going through, right, the disc is more nose down than if I was leaning back and coming through, the disc is going to be more nose up. So those, I think, are the main reasons why I am much more consistent uh, in my uh, nose angle during my delivery, the nose angle being down. Does spin have anything to do with it? Well, uh, the only reason that I put that is because when I was thinking about it, and I already talked about it, when I do my grip, I pinch, right, the forefinger and my thumb. And this, this grip, uh, which gives me more nose down, I think is also allowing me to generate more spin. Uh, because when I get to the hit, I have this I have this pivot point now between my first finger and my thumb in, in, in my grip. And when I get to my hit, instead of flicking my wrist, right, I said, I force it out and that disc is forced to spin out of my hand. So just think about it for a second. Uh, and I thought about it the other day. If you have a penny and you just hold it in your hand like this, right? The pennies right in here, and you put it on the floor and you spin it like a top. How long is that penny going to spin with you trying to force it to spin like this? To me, that's what doing this is. It's you trying to force spin instead of letting momentum force the spin. So I'm going to counter that by if you put the penny on a table and hold it like a kickoff. Like, like a guy holding a football for a kickoff, and then flick it. How much more power is generated into that penny from that force? To me, that's the difference between this and this. Um, I, I could be wrong, but, and, and, and I usually am. Are they mutually exclusive of each other? No, they are not. Are they dependent on one another? I don't know. I'll let you decide. So there you have it. There's the, uh, there's the four reasons that I think that I'm throwing nose down much more consistently. I hope uh, you found something useful in this, uh, found something to help you. It's the beauty of disc golf is that, um, you know, we're all different. We're all made different. Our bodies function differently. Uh, and it's really nice to have different ideas on the subject to see what works for you. So I hope something that I said today helps you out and works for you and improves your game as you walk alongside of me on my journey to improve my game. So until next time, enjoy the journey and here